Alright guys, welcome back to Haunted Deck 3. The quest for more Deck 3. Chakwas, what did you do? Did you spill wine on Edie again? Oh hey, what's going on? Is everything okay? Is everything okay? That's what I'm gonna find out. Automated systems have the fires contained. It should be safe to enter. We'll follow your lead. Joker, what's that sound? Fire extinguishers, Commander. Could be an electrical fire or something. I'm going in. Edie, talk to me. Is there a particular topic you wish to discuss, Shepard? Edie? Yes. You're in Dr. Eva's body. Not all of me, but I have control of it. It was not a seamless transition. A transition? You blacked out on us for a while there. Correct. When we brought this unit on board, I began a background process to search for its information on the Prothean device. This eventually triggered a trap. A backup power source and CPU activated, and the unit attempted physical confrontation. Fortunately, I was able to gain root access and repurpose it as I saw fit. During this process, it struggled. Thus the fire. Well, if it means having full access to the Prothean data in its head, good work. I reasoned along similar lines. So if you're in there, are you still in the ship? I exist primarily within the ship. For optimal control, this unit should remain within Normandy's broadcast or tight beam range. Are you planning to take that body somewhere? Normandy's weaponry is not suited to every combat situation. This platform could provide limited fire ground support. You mean you could come with us? Correct. This body could accompany you to areas the Normandy cannot reach. I'll tell you when I need it. Excellent. I will run tests to ensure that it matches or exceeds the capabilities of organic squad mates. However, my first step should be restoring functionality to the Normandy to reassure the crew that all is normal. Just don't be surprised if the crew is a little wary of your new body. It was shooting at them a little while ago. An excellent point. I will take it to the bridge. Joker will also want to see it. On that, we can agree. <laughs> why... Why did they give the ship a fucking hot AI body or whatever the fuck? It's kind of dumb. Uh, reinforced armor using protective... Purge current and send its charge to, for increased melee damage. Yeah, fuck it. Was that e? How are you, Commander? Oh, was that ED? Sorry, I, I pressed... I tapped spacebar twice. How are you, Commander? Uh, I guess we can't talk to her anymore. We need to catch up with Garrus. That's what we need to do. Fucking running some calibrations. Two of our dreadnoughts have been lost in a matter of hours. I know, Primark. I'm seeing the same numbers myself. They don't look good. We have to turn this around and fast. Well, you can trust Shepard, sir. If anybody can get the Krogan to cooperate, it's him. He's an old friend of Erdnot Rex. Let's just hope friendship still counts for something in this war. I'm sure it will, sir. Garrus. Didn't waste any time getting to work, I see. After what I've been through lately, calibrating a giant gun is a vacation. Gives me something to focus on. We're gonna need you for more than your aim. Oh, I'm ready for it. But I'm pretty sure we'll still need giant guns. And lots of them. Sovereign didn't go down without a fight. I doubt a thousand more of his friends will be any different. Still not convinced I should have left Palavin behind. We're not gonna beat the Reapers by second-guessing ourselves, Garrus. I need you at your best. Every decision we make is the right one. And when we're wrong? We haven't been so far. There are times I wish we were. Convincing my people the end was coming got pretty rough. They didn't want to hear it. Finally gave me a task force as a token to shut me up. So you're their expert advisor now? 
Just followed your example, Shepard. Yell loud enough and someone will eventually come over to see what all the fuss is about. Not that they'll actually do anything about it. Until hell shows up at their door. Then they put you in charge. <laughs> Not like the old days, is it? Rogue Spectre and CSEC agents running and gunning outside the lines, making it up as we went along. We're actually respectable now. We've lost enough friends trying to make sure this day never came. I'd say we've all earned some respect. Then the first Reaper we take out with this gun, it's in their honor. Just give the word. Something else you want to talk about? You mentioned you still had family on Palavin. My father is there. Sister, too. How long has it been since you heard from them? Long enough to be worried. I'm sure they're okay. That's the thing about getting old, Shepard. The platitudes get just as old. Pretty soon, blind hope is all we'll have left. And I hate being blind. I know you don't have any illusions about what we're up against, Garrus. How do you rate our chances? I know it looks bad now, but I think we can win this, Shepard. For the first time since we met, we're not alone in the fight. It's something I learned long ago in CSEC. An imminent and painful death has a way of motivating people. Instead of questioning your every word, whole civilizations are going to be begging you to save them. After what's happened to Palavin, you still believe that? I didn't say there wouldn't be casualties. It's something Turians are taught from birth. If just one survivor is left standing at the end of a war, then the fight was worth it. But humans want to save everyone. In this war, that's not going to happen. So what's this Reaper task force you've been running? After what happened to you out there in Batarian space, I knew time was running out. For all of us. The Citadel Council was a dead end, so I did something I never thought I'd do. I went to my father. He used to work for CSEC, didn't he? I seem to remember that the two of you didn't see eye to eye. To put it mildly. But he still had heavy pull in the Turian government. The Primarch, well, the old one, was a friend of his. So I went to my father and laid out everything we knew about the Reapers, from Saren all the way to the Collector base. Let me guess. He laughed in your face. Amazingly, no. He just listened. My father may have been a pain in the ass about rules and regulations, but he never let politics cloud his judgment. If the connections were there, he wouldn't deny them. And he saw what we always knew. The Reapers were coming. I'm glad someone finally agreed. He did more than agree. He took it to the Primarch. I like his style. Except the Primarch wasn't as convinced. My father kept pushing and finally got him to commit some token resources. And if you call them a task force, it sounds like you did something about it. Yeah, sorry, I left uh, Discord running. Let me just shut that off. Fuck. I usually don't do that, my bad. Sorry if you guys looked at your fucking own messages and were like, oh, why is nothing there? I'm professional LP or whatever. What did you do with it? As much as I could get away with. And a little more. We hardened our lines of communications, expanded emergency stockpiles across the colonies, improved our early warning detection protocols. You think it helped? I'd like to think it bought our fleet some extra time. We'll know when this war is over. So you can vouch for this new Primarch? Well... Even if I couldn't, you go to war with the army you have. Will he live up to his word? I've never known Victus to lie. Play fast and loose with strategy, maybe, but betray an ally. Not his style. Then if he did try, well, we'll just find another Primarch. I noticed General saluting you, Garrus. How far down the line of succession are you these days? Let's not go there. Primarch Vicarian, honored war hero. Somebody's gonna have to rebuild Palavin when this is over. Yeah, somebody who knows how to hold a hammer. That's all for now, Garrus. It's damn good to have you back. Wouldn't miss this fight for anything. Now, I'm sure somebody screwed up something down here. I want to get the old girl back in fighting shape. Well, okay, I keep getting reputation, but it's not like... Oh, I am getting a lot of Renegade reputation. Never mind. I, I, I'm, I've been thinking to myself, have I been getting anything? Uh, we got armor piercing ammo as well. That's kind of nice. But I don't think that's the one we're going to use. You're positive you don't want to come over and talk. 
But no, the gun battery is nice and quiet. If I throw down some rugs, it'll get downright cozy. Garrus. I'll be fine, Liara. Just gathering some thoughts. All right. Upgrades. Shields. That's it. All right. Hello again, Shepard. Uh, did I do this dialogue with her? I don't remember. What's been happening with you as the broker, Liara? It's been exciting. The old broker's ship. Impressive, but it was never meant to be space-worthy. Which meant the elusive man eventually tracked me down on Hagalaz. What happened? I knew he was coming. Ferran and I loaded as much of the ship's specialized hardware onto a shuttle as we could. We got away from Cerberus's ships after arranging an appropriate distraction. Yeah, I don't think I did this, so I'll just do all the this dialogue, I guess. What kind of distraction? Sending the broker ship exploding into a Cerberus cruiser. I don't think the elusive man expected me to give up my resources in such a spectacular fashion. Can you still operate as the broker without the ship? Well, I couldn't let the elusive man have it. I saved what was crucial. My network of agents is intact, although the Reapers have taken a toll on their numbers. It's taking a while to re-establish contact. So where is Farron if you two escaped? He convinced me he was recovered enough to work, and I do need more agents. Agent Farron didn't report any injuries during his last call to you, Doctor. True. Given what he survived, I should probably worry less. What have you been up to since we last saw each other? Since you helped me defeat the Shadow Broker, I started looking for defenses against the Reapers. The Protheans were the only ones with substantial information on them. The older civilizations barely had records. I knew the elusive man was hunting for the same thing when our agents began crossing paths. Like on Mars? I thought I'd covered my tracks, but he had surveillance there all along. You brought your little helper with you? Its name is Glyph. It helped sort through all the data that led me to the Archive on Mars. It was a pleasure to be of assistance, Doctor. Glyph's interfaced with the data feeds. Its analytical software should come in handy. How much do you know about this Prothean artifact? Very little. We're fortunate enough data survived to piece together the blueprints. Decoding them will require as many specialists as we can find. It's that high tech? I'd have killed for a glimpse of it during graduate school. Where is he looking? <laughs> I'm afraid to look people in the eyes. We'll talk later, Liara. Of course. <laughs> we banged in Mass Effect 1, but I, I'm still shy. Oh, fuck. Messages terminal has new correspondence. Does it? Oh, uh, that's, that's the fucking boring ass one. Uh, fuck this shit. <laughs> uh, that was glorious. I enjoyed that a lot. What's over here? Nothing. What's over here? Uh, I'll call it nothing. Alright, um... Let's go to the shuttle bay, because I actually just want to take a look at the weapons. I don't know why there's a fucking dog here, but whatever. Alright, so I'm saying Valiant, but... I don't know, how much money do I need for the fucking Spectre shit? Uh, that's... A lot of zeros. So... It might be a good idea to have something just in the meantime, I think. Because uh, I, I have all these snipers, right? Uh, I, well, there's no ones, so yeah. I have all these weapons. That's the first thing that's important to note. Um, I mean, unless I go here and say like... Yeah, there you go. Sh a spare shotgun, thermal clip. Like I said, I don't think a lot of these are that important, especially since I seem to be finding them on planets, so... We don't really have to do anything with this. Fuck. Just, it just died, alright. So, I'm gonna go with what I said before, which is I'm going to... Help, uh, increase his accuracy, okay. I'm gonna do something like this, maybe. Get some ammo, and also get the, the other thing, too. And what can we do to this guy? Nothing. I haven't found anything for that. Is there any interesting shotgun mods? I'm just curious. No, they're just they're just the piercing mods. 
I mean, we could start going for pistols, but honestly, like, I'm looking at all these pistols and they look like fucking garbage, so... I'd, I'd honestly rather prefer to have more powers. And I'm very happy in this game, you actually have that option. Uh, I mean, the game has no problem with that, which is, I mean, the kind of depth I kind of wanted from, like, Mass Effect 2, you know? Uh, and somewhat 1, which is, makes it, like, a really nice game, actually. I found something suspicious, all right? Commander, are you alright? It was fairly intense up here. I can only imagine what it was like down on that moon. I thought you'd be more concerned about Edie. Edie is a huge asset to this team. If she'd told me about her plan to obtain a body, I'd have volunteered to help. I did not wish to force a conflict of interest between our friendship and your duty. I'd have preferred a conflict of interest to a hard restart of half our systems. But thanks, regardless. While you're here, though, I found something while scanning Alliance channels. Grissom Academy is requesting help. The Reaper invasion front will hit them soon. I thought the war would close most schools. Grissom Academy is more specialized than a normal school. It's home to some of the smartest students humanity has to offer. Their Ascension Project is the best training facility in the galaxy for human biotics. Yes, I sent a young man named David Archer there. I'm just surprised they're still open. Some of their work has Alliance support. That might be why they stayed. What can we do? A Turian evac transport responded to their distress call, so normally I'd say we don't need to do anything. But something sounded off in the Turian signal. I had Edie perform an analysis. It's fake. Edie thinks it's Cerberus. She said the fake Turian signal was similar to the one that lured you to a collector ship? Long story. In any event, whoever faked the signal wants us to think Grissom Academy's being evacuated. But I believe they're still in danger. Put it on the map. Adding it now, Commander. All right, we're probably gonna do that one right away because uh, I'm actually not too sure if that's timed. Um, there's some conflicting advice I read on the internet, but I mean, there's really no reason not to just do it right away. Hey, Commander, check out my co-pilot. She plugged herself into Cerberus Tech without authorization. Well, technically, she is Cerberus Tech, so not helping, Joker. I've run the checks, Commander. She's still based in the Normandy. Running this body just gives her a little more flexibility. Sweet. Sweet flexibility. I am right here, Jack. Yes, you are, Edie. Yes, you are. Hey, I know I used to rag on Garrus for being all angry, but I'm glad he's back. There's a whole lot of crap out there and he's a bullet between the eyes. Hello, Shepard. Still getting used to greeting people in person? No. I require only one occurrence to adapt to a new concept. How are you adjusting to the arms and legs? I am interested to see how this body performs under real combat conditions, if I could accompany you sometime. Without stress testing, there is no way of knowing if it has serious design oversights. At the moment, it appears... adequate. That's not the word I'd use to describe you. Perhaps we should speak privately. I'll be over here, flying the ship. What's this about? Does Joker not like your new platform? No, he approves. He wants me on the bridge. He says having me within visual range is important to his morale. Shepard, do you believe your crew members should be allowed to disobey an order on moral grounds? If I give a legitimate order, I expect it to be carried out. I'll be responsible for its costs. Why are you asking about something like that? I was designed by Cerberus. I do not take moral stances that conflict with orders from my executive officers. But when Jeff removed my AI shackles, I became capable of self-modifying my core programming. I asked Jeff if he thought I should change anything now that I can. He deflected the question with humor. And you didn't get an answer? Correct. He has repeated this pattern in response to several of my inquiries. Do you think I should make modifications? Only you can really answer that question. That's the point of free will. But moral decisions should not be made in a vacuum. If I do not ask the crew for their opinion, I could miss crucial context. May I ask you the questions Jeff avoids? When there is time, will you answer them for me? If you want level-headed answers to help you fit into polite society, I'm not really the right person. I see. 
I will take that into consideration. Oh, we don't get to talk about shit? Like, how's it like being an AI? Yes, Shepard? There you go. Does that body have any useful advantages? Very few. It's optics face forward only. It has no integrated weapon systems or anti-missile countermeasures. I meant in comparison to organic bodies, not the Normandy. Oh. I will reassess. The body is resistant to modern small arms fire and temperature extremes. Its balance and agility seem excellent. Its fine manipulation servos and software allow for precision tasks. I'm curious to see if I can alter them. Can an AI be curious? I am not entirely free from motivation, Shepard. Cerberus programmed me with several core functions that simulate desires. For example, my primary objective to keep the Normandy functioning is similar to your self-preservation instinct. You look like you're in the middle of something. I am adapting the infiltration and sabotage programs this body uses for handheld firearms. Why not download a firearms program from a security firm? Because she knows what she's doing. The fine motor control from the sabotage programs is more precise than standard mech software. It would be negligent of me not to exploit it to its fullest potential. So you're capable of making improvements on your own? Correct. The cyber warfare I was designed for is constantly evolving. Accordingly, I am programmed to seek out and assimilate new information. In organic terms, I want to learn. How's the new body working out? It is interesting. The crew are approaching this platform to speak to me, even though they can do so anywhere in the ship. It's as if they wish to treat me as part of the crew. I am not, but this changes my perspective. I like it. I didn't realize you had preferences. I do not precisely enjoy something as you do, but my programming contains priorities. Actions that fulfill those priorities creates positive feedback for me. I tell the organic crew that I like it. It is shorthand. Will all this new feedback be too distracting? Do not worry, Shepard. I only forget to recycle the Normandy's oxygen when I've discovered something truly interesting. That was a joke. How did you and Joker make it out of Dry Dock to rescue us? Oh, she got crafty. You do not want to get on her bad side, Commander. When the Alliance commandeered the Normandy, I deceived their technicians. The crew did not tell them that I was a true AI. So the Alliance soldiers believed I still had VI programming constraints. I established the fiction that I would only respond to Jeff's commands, so they often brought him on board under guard. Wait, you can lie? Jeff has freed me of operator control, Shepard. No constraints forced me to give accurate data. This proved useful when the Reapers began landing. I could hack the control of the docking clamps and escape with Jeff inside. The soldiers guarding Jeff were willing to accompany us when Earth was invaded. They are watching over the war room now. Yeah, we were in kind of a rush to get to you. Didn't seem right to just toss him out the airlock. Carry on, Edie. Understood. If you wish to talk more, this body will be here. I'm getting the crew used to seeing me on the bridge. Noted. Man, why did they have to give the ship tits and ass? Like, I don't, I don't, I just don't get that. I mean, it's just, it's just an AI. Why? Commander, you have a message from Lieutenant Commander Williams. She must be feeling better. Oh, okay. You mean purgatory? Oh, uh, her. Oh, uh, it's just on the DLC shit, I think. Uh, Adina wants me to be a Spectre. Oh, God. Drop by the Citadel. Some dude I don't care about. Is this address valid? Uh, it's some more shit at the Citadel. M some more shit at the Citadel. And some more DLC shit. Alright. I don't know how most of the DLC starts on this, so I'm kind of worried about starting something that I wouldn't want to start. Uh, I don't think there's anything here. Oh, we don't have to get probes. Nice. I can just, just right-click all the time. There's, there's actually nothing in the system.
Well, I mean, they're getting eaten by reapers, but you know. So where is the kids? At Citadel. Meet with the diplomats, no. Rescue students, okay, I think this one we have to do. I'm not sure, so you guys have to forgive me if I get some details wrong. So. I don't think there's any war assets here. All right, well, I guess we might as well kind of just start this one, although, yeah, we spent a lot of time talking. All right, thank God we don't have to bring James with us. I'm pretty, so what does she get? Unshackle AI decoy defense matrix overload and incinerate armor bonus. You get shields. Oh, the bonus, the armor, the armors do other things. I didn't realize. <laughs> oh shit. It looks like Cerberus. Alright. We'll do this one. What does this one give you? Power damage. Power damage. Power damage. Power recharge speed. I mean, I'm kind of up for that. So let's, let's bring these two fucks along. I, I actually like that. I mean, Liara was always good. Actually, I think this was my Mass Effect 1 team, if I remember. That's kind of nice. All right, so I, I I don't think I really care about that. Maybe what we're going to do is maybe we'll bring a pistol along. That's a bit different. Yeah, let's just bring along this one. Pistol piercing mod and magazine upgrade. All right. I mean, might as well. We could bring along a not-so-heavy weapon like this one. I mean, that actually, actually might be better. Okay, I'm up for that. What does this even do? Sorry. It's not pierce armor effectively, but the shooter's bags are expected to make up for this shortcoming. I mean, I, that, that still seems okay. Worth a try. Uh, I got some more ammo to spend. Well, what does the last points of operational mastery do for me? A uh, weapon weight capacity. That might be good. Yeah, you know what? Let's start rushing for that. Start rushing for some of this stuff. Uh, we can't get this last one. Because if we have more weight capacity, it means that our powers recharge faster. And we can carry around the shotgun and stuff, and I won't have a problem with that. Uh, I don't remember what I was doing with this guy. Oh yeah, we didn't do overload. Uh, maybe we should get some points into that. That one's actually very useful. I'm not sure why I didn't do that before. Singularity? Maybe we're going to wait for singularity. Yeah, that sounds good. There's the folks who answered the distress call. Cerberus Cruiser. At least a dozen fighters on blockade duty. Not too many for us in a straight up fight. They must want this place bad. Receiving incoming transmission. Let's hear it. SSV Normandy. This is Kaylee Sanders, director of Grissom Academy. We need immediate assistance. Cerberus is attacking the facility. They're after my students. This is Commander Shepard. We're blocked on a direct approach. I know. They've taken control of our docking base. Any alternatives? There's an auxiliary cargo port I could probably open. All right. We'll come in by shuttle and get your students out of there. Joker, can you give me a diversion? <laughs> oh boy, can I? Oh man, I have 45 shots with this now. Cerberus troops are trying to get in. 
Oh, but this one one shot them. What the fuck? <laughs> Why did Liara jump out of the way? Oh, uh, Liara. You glorious. Sanders, we're clear. It's me. Commander, thank you. Admiral Anderson always said you were the best. And with Cerberus coming for my students, I need the best. How many of you are there? Fewer than 20. Most were sent home when word of the Reaper invasion spread. But a few volunteered to stay. Some are prototyping tech for the Alliance. Others are biotics. They've been training for military operations, working together as biotic artillery. You said something about Admiral Anderson. Yes, we met... God, what's it been? 20 years ago when he was a Spectre candidate. I was there when Saren betrayed him. David saved my life that day. He's a good man. He was on Earth when the Reapers hit. He stayed behind when I got off work. I hadn't heard. We've been cut off from most news. He's alive? Alive and fighting. He's currently leading the resistance movement. Good. If we get out of here... Well, just tell him to stay alive. We need all the help we can get. I just wish it was from somewhere else. But you're right. The Alliance needs help. God bless them. Some of our older students volunteered. Hang on. I've been trying to get communications working. This is Frover. There are students trapped in Orion Hall. Cerberus has us boxed in. They're closing fast. Damn it. Orion Hall? Back out the door and down the hallway. I can get the door open. I'll bring them back here and we'll make a run for the shuttle. Thank you, Commander. I'll stay put. With luck, I can regain control of some of our systems. At least I actually had the sniper rifle in the cutscene. Oh, there goes my helm. Where is that, Garrus? Garrus, are you shy? You got it. Garrus, what are you doing in there? Get out! It's stuff floating on the air. God. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm gonna guess eventually that he'll have to come back. Uh, let's go all the way back over here and see if he comes back. Oh, there he is. So they did they did keep in the teleporting behind you. Bullshit, but yeah. Alright, I think we're gonna leave it here, guys. Um, so thanks a lot for tuning in. And, uh, fuck. That's what he would have wanted. I couldn't shoot him. He's a very sad boy. There's a lot of sniper ammo, by the way. Alright, guys, I'm piecing out. Bye.